May 30th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Kings chapter 12 from the Old Testament. Rehoboam traveled to Shechem, for all Israel had gathered in Shechem to make Rehoboam king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard the news, he was still in Egypt, where he had fled from King Solomon and had been living ever since. They sent for him, and Jeroboam and the whole Israelite assembly came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made us work too hard. Now, if you lighten the demands he made and don't make us work as hard, we will serve you. He said to them, Go away for three days, then return to me. So the people went away. King Rehoboam consulted with the older advisors who had served his father Solomon when he had been alive. He asked them, How do you advise me to answer these people? They said to him, Today if you show a willingness to help these people and grant their request, they will be your servants from this time forward. But Rehoboam rejected their advice and consulted the young advisors who served him, with whom he had grown up. He asked them, How do you advise me to respond to these people who said to me, Lessen the demands your father placed on us? The young advisors with whom Rehoboam had grown up said to him, Say this to these people who have said to you, Your father made us work hard, but now lighten our burden. Say this to them, I am a lot harsher than my father. My father imposed heavy demands on you. I will make them even heavier. My father punished you with ordinary whips. I will punish you with whips that really sting your flesh. Jeroboam and all the people reported to Rehoboam on the third day, just as the king had ordered when he said, Return to me on the third day. The king responded to the people harshly. He rejected the advice of the older men and followed the advice of the younger ones. He said, My father imposed heavy demands on you. I will make them even heavier. My father punished you with ordinary whips. I will punish you with whips that really sting your flesh. The king refused to listen to the people because the Lord was instigating this turn of events so that he might bring to pass the prophetic announcement he had made through Ahijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, son of Nebat. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, the people answered the king, We have no portion in David, no share in the son of Jesse. Return to your homes, O Israel. Now look after your own dynasty, O David. So Israel returned to their homes. Rehoboam continued to rule over the Israelites who lived in the cities of Judah. King Rehoboam sent Adoniram, the supervisor of the work crews, out after them. But all Israel stoned him to death. King Rehoboam managed to jump into his chariot and escape to Jerusalem. So Israel had been in rebellion against the Davidic dynasty to this very day. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they summoned him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. No one except the tribe of Judah remained loyal to the Davidic dynasty. When Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he summoned 180,000 skilled warriors from all of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, to attack Israel and restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, son of Solomon. But God told Shemaiah the prophet, Say this to King Rehoboam, son of Solomon of Judah, and to all Judah and Benjamin, as well as the rest of the people. The Lord says this, Do not attack and make war with your brothers the Israelites. Each of you go home, for I have caused this to happen. They obeyed the Lord and went home as the Lord had ordered them to do. Jeroboam built up Shechem in the Ephraimite hill country and lived there. From there he went up and built up Penuel. Jeroboam then thought to himself, Now the Davidic dynasty could regain the kingdom. If these people go up to offer sacrifices in the Lord's temple in Jerusalem, their loyalty could shift to their former master, King Rehoboam of Judah. They might kill me and return to King Rehoboam of Judah. After the king had consulted with his advisors, he made two golden calves. Then he said to the people, 
It is too much trouble for you to go up to Jerusalem. Look, Israel, here are your gods who brought you up from the land of Egypt. He put one in Bethel and the other in Dan. This caused Israel to sin. The people went to Bethel and Dan to worship the calves. He built temples on the high places and appointed as priests people who were not Levites. Jeroboam inaugurated a festival on the 15th day of the 8th month, like the festival celebrated in Judah. On the altar in Bethel, he offered sacrifices to the calves he had made. In Bethel, he also appointed priests for the high places he had made. On the 15th day of the 8th month, a day he had arbitrarily chosen, Jeroboam offered sacrifices on the altar he had made in Bethel. He inaugurated a festival for the Israelites and went up to the altar to offer sacrifices. God, it's so hard to hear about your your chosen people being torn apart by their own choices, by their own choice of sin and ego and desires. We, we do know that as Judah and Israel split, Israel ends up with no good kings, <laughs> ironically enough. Um, and Judah goes through good kings and bad kings and in between kings uh, to lead them. But here's what's amazing is you keep sending in prophets to help your people. You keep sending in the prophets to help your remnant throughout all this and there always is a remnant that comes out of this that carries on for you but re reading these uh, chapters first kings second kings the whole division of your people into the two kingdoms it's just hard it, it's hard watching like jeroboam think he's aaron making golden calves again and worshiping god small g rather than the god the God who brought them out of Egypt. God, I don't, I don't know where we get off track. I know why we get off track because we make it all about us, but I don't know where we get off track. I don't know how we're going along in our lives and then all of a sudden we seem really, really far away from you. I do know how to get back to you though. So, because I've had to do it a lot, I do know that if anybody's listening right now and they feel like you're really far away from them, I do want to reassure them, one, it's not God who's really far away. A and you know that, just like I knew that. And I know it every time I push God away. He's right there beside us. He's never left us. He has always loved us. And God, would you just reassure them by, by wrapping your arms around, th around them and, and holding them tight and allowing them to feel that grace? And then I know that, that when I push you away, God, that the only other thing that, that brings me back to you is by being in your word. And it always seems to be the furthest thing away from my mind to want to hear your words. But it's so amazing that as soon as I start reading your love letters to me from the Bible, everything is okay again. Your love fills me up. Your grace and mercy wash over me. And your forgiveness cleanses me. And I am once again your child. God, I don't know why we fight so hard to, to push you away. I don't know if it's because we don't think we can ever live up to what you expect. I don't know if it's that desire and pull of the world and the worldly things that is so big. I think it's, I'm sure it's different for every single person. But I do know without a shadow of a doubt that every time I open the Bible, every time I read your words, everything, everything in my life seems to be put back in its place. Everything is right again. 
it doesn't mean that it is settled. It doesn't mean that everything's fixed. It just means everything's back in its rightful place. And there's this amazing peace that you give me in the midst of all this turmoil that can't even be described. So in the middle of all this stuff going on with Israel and Judah, all these egos, all this posturing, all this anger, all this desire for control, even out of all of that, to the people who sought you and sought your word, you gave them that peace and you allowed them to come out of all of that and be your remnant. Now, granted, they may be may have been taken into captivity, as we're about to read. <sighs> they may have been threatened with bad kings, slavery. But even amongst all of that, you always gave this amazing peace to your people. So God, if there's somebody listening right now who is really far away from you, I know you're not far away from them. God, I just pray that they just stop tonight and just open up a Bible. Maybe opening up to 1 John, maybe opening up to Ruth. Maybe it's James that they need to read. But I know that the Bible was written as a love letter to them just as it was to me. And I know those words will comfort doesn't mean that everything will be healed instantly but those words will make everything right God I just pray for their hearts right now because it was pain that took them away from you it was pain and anger and frustration and ego and desires that drove them away from you that made them push you away and I just ask that you, that you just show them the grace and mercy that you've always shown me as I find my way back to you again. As I hold out my hand and, <laughs> and you don't just take my hand, you just grab me whole and hold me tight. And I can just feel this amazing love from you. God, I will never understand the love you have for us. This boundless, unconditional love that is truly unconditional, unlike anything we experience here on earth. But I do know I sure appreciate it. And I would be lost without it. Very lost. God, for all those who are lost tonight, just help guide them back to you. Guide them back to the steps, and the path, and the life you want them to have. You don't want their lives divided. You don't want them to be lost. You want them to have this amazing life that you had planned for them. And I know you'll show them how much you love them. In your son's name we pray. Amen.